Over the years, heroes in the ancient Greece were those considered as having special strength, courage or abilities. They were often of divine ancestry, or were favored by the gods. Either way, only the images of the bravest were engraved in memories, had their names go down in history, and will be remembered as the ones who accomplished superhuman acts. There once lived a king named Acrisius of Argos, whose unique daughter, Danae, was the more beautiful above all the other women of the land. But this was a small comfort to the king for not having a son. He then journeyed to Delphi, to ask the gods if there was any hope that someday he would be the father of a boy. The oracle told him that's never going to happen, and added something that was far worse. The oracle warned Acrisius that Danae would have a son who would be the one to kill him. Loving life more than anything else, more than his own daughter, the king was ready to make her disappear, since his fatherly affection was not strong, but his fear for the gods was. He could not resolve to kill his daughter since the gods visited with terrible punishment those who shed the blood of kindred. Acrisius chose to lock up Danae in a bronze tower with no door and only one small window, that can only let sunlight go through. Now, the king thought that his daughter would never marry or have children. Therefore he would be safe from the prophecy. But then, one day as she sat in her chamber praying, a bright shower of gold blazed in through the window and turned into the splendid Zeus. God and mortal woman loved each other, and in no time, Danae bore a son whom she named Perseus. When Acrisius found Danae with her son, he was terrified, and furious at the same time. He cried in great anger, he would not let the prophecy come true at all cost. The king thought for a way to get rid of his daughter and his grandchild Perseus. But he didn't want to kill neither of them fearing for the same reason that had kept him from killing her, which could have brought him suffering from the wrath of the gods such as Zeus and the Furies who pursue such murderers. So he had Danae and Perseus shut in a large chest and cast out to sea, but the chest did not sink as the king planned. Like something was watching over them. Fate willed it or perhaps Zeus who up to now had done little for his love and his child. It floated safely over the waves to the island of Seraphos, where mother and son were rescued by a good man, a fisherman called Dictes, who came across the great chest, broke it open and found Danae and her son. The man took them both home where his kindly wife awaited. Since the couple didn't have children, they cared for Danae and Perseus as if they were their own. Perseus grew up to become a fine, clever young man who followed the fisherman's humble trade, out of harm's way. But in the end, more trouble came. Polydectes, the ruler of the little island, was the brother of Dictes, but he was a cruel and ruthless man. King Polydectes grew obsessed with Danae's beauty as she was still radiant. The king would have wed her even by force, but Perseus stood between them. Polydectes was furious, but he couldn't simply have Perseus slain. That would not be a kingly act. Instead, he secretly plotted to get rid of the inconvenient young man. Then one day, the king announced that he would be marrying another royal woman, and that everyone who was loyal to him must bring a suitably noble present. Perseus alone could bring nothing because, as Polydectes knew very well, Perseus owned nothing. But this was the king's chance, so he pretended to be offended, claiming that the young man to whom he'd given hospitality was useless and disloyal knowing perfectly well what would happen. Sure enough, the insulted Perseus shouted that he could bring Polydectes anything the king might wish. Knowing there were some fearsome monsters called Gorgons, who lived on an island and were known far and wide because of their deadly power, the king Polydectes took advantage of the situation, and stated that he would like to have the head of the Gorgon Medusa as a gift. This was a golden opportunity for the king to make Perseus disappear once and for all, as no warriors has ever came back after went hunting the creature. But Perseus accepted the task, he stood up before them all and did exactly what the king had hoped he would do. He declared that he would give him a present better than anything there. He would go off and kill Medusa and bring back her head as his wedding gift. Nothing could have suited the king better. 
Only as he set out on his quest for the Gorgon, Perseus was about to discover what he was actually hunting. Although there were three Gorgons, Oriole, Steno, and Medusa. Medusa was the most fearsome of the three, but also the only one who was still mortal. She had serpents for hair and her stare could turn a man instantly to stone. It seemed that Perseus had been led by his angry pride into making an empty boast. He secretly despaired, wondering how he could ever take the head of a such terrible monster. Fortunately for Perseus, two gods were watching over him. The goddess Athena who once hated Medusa at a point of changing her into that hideous monster, but realized her wrong done to her former priestess and decided to use this opportunity to end the suffering that she herself caused. She appeared before the startled Perseus, a tall, handsome, cool-eyed woman. And beside her stood a golden-haired young man wearing winged sandals, this was Hermes, the messenger of the gods. They told Perseus that they decided to help him slay Medusa. Hermes gave him the winged sandals and the deadly metal sickle that Kronos had once used to overpower his own father. While Athena gave him a highly polished shield, as shiny as a mirror. Perseus would be able to slay Medusa by looking only at her reflection, and would not be turned to stone. The young man was told by the gods that what he needed to find Medusa was in possession of the nymphs of the north. To find the nymphs abode, they must go to the Grey Women also known as the Gree, who alone could tell him the way. With that being said, the two gods vanished. Perseus set out to find them. When he reached their abode, a dim cave, where no sunlight could reach, he hid and watched them. They were quite strange beings, they seemed almost like ancient women. But they had only one eye to share among the three of them and took turns using it. As soon as one took out the eye to give to another, Perseus sprang from his hiding place and snatched the eye from them. He threatened to not give their eye back until they told him how to reach the nymphs of the north. Grumbling, the Grey Eye gave him directions. Giving them back their eye, Perseus flew off on his winged sandals. The Stygian nymphs, who were friendlier than the Gree, welcomed the hero and gave him the Cap of Darkness to make him invisible, and a magical silver bag in which he could safely place the head of Medusa, then told him how to reach the Gorgon's lair. Perseus flew on, following their directions until he came to a mountainous island. To his horror, what he had taken to be rocks, were stone figures that used to be men. He instantly knew that was in fact the Gorgon spot. Perseus raised his shield, using it as a mirror, and saw Medusa and her sisters asleep. Hastily, he put on the cap of Hades, and slowly flew down. Still watching only in the shield mirror, he swung the sword and felt it cut through Medusa's neck. Not daring to look away from the image on the shield, he forced Medusa's head into the bag. As Medusa's sisters woke to attack, Perseus quickly flew away from them. On the flight back to Seraphos, the hero performed one act of kindness. He met Atlas, the huge titan who had been sentenced by Zeus to hold up the sky for the eternity. At the titan's weary request, he showed Atlas Medusa's head, turning him to stone so that he could no longer feel the weight of his burden. As Perseus flew on, he suddenly saw what looked like a lovely statue chained to a rock. But once he got closer, he realized that that wasn't a statue, but a young woman who had been given up to be devoured by a sea monster. When he asked for her name, she turned a tearful face up to him. She was Andromeda of Ethiopia, a lovely maiden whose mother was a silly vain woman, known as the Queen Cassiopeia, who claimed that she was more beautiful than the Nereids, the nymphs of the sea. A boastful claim that angered Poseidon, who proclaimed that the queen's daughter must be sacrificed to a sea monster, in order to appease the anger of the god. As she finished talking, a hideous creature rose from the sea, tentacles waving and beak clashing. Andromeda screamed, but Perseus simply pulled Medusa's head out of the magical bag, and the sea monster turned immediately into stone. The creature then crumbled to pieces and fell back into the sea. 
cutting Andromeda's chains, the Greek hero flew with her to her father, King Cepheus of Phoenicia. By this time, the young people were clinging to each other happily. And when Perseus asked for Andromeda's hand in marriage, Cepheus gladly agreed. The young man took the princess in his arms once more and set off for Seraphos. In other myths to travel around the world, the young man received the help of Pegasus, the winged stallion that sprang from the dead body of the Gorgon Medusa. When Perseus and Andromeda arrived at Seraphos, the hero learned that the fisherman Dicte's wife was long dead, and the two others, Danae and the man who had been like a father to him, had to hide themselves from Polydectes, who was furious at Danae's refusal to marry him, and had taken refuge in a temple. Soon enough, Perseus learned that the king was holding a banquet in the palace and all the men who favored him were gathered there. Perseus instantly saw his opportunity and he went straight to the palace and entered the hall. As he stood at the entrance, with Athena's shining buckler on his chest, the silver bag at his side, he drew the eyes of every man towards him. Then before any could look away, he held up the gorgon's head, and at the sight one and all, the cruel king and his servile courtiers, were turned into stone. There they sat in line like a row of statues, frozen stiff in the attitude the king had, struck by the appearance of Perseus, a man that he thought was no longer alive. Danae happily rushed into her son's arms. He made Dictes king of the island, but he and his mother decided that they would go back with Andromeda to Greece and try to be reconciled to Acrisius, to see if the many years that had passed since he had put them in the chest had not softened him, so that he would be glad to receive his daughter and grandson. On the way, they stopped to rest at Larissa, where the local king was holding a great athletic contest. The hero couldn't help but tried his hand in some athletic games. But when he threw the discus, the wind caught it and ended up hitting one of the spectators, an old man right on the head and slew him. Sadly, it was none other than King Acrisius, who was there on a visit to the king, and had long ago been driven away of Argos. The same king who had tried to prevent Danae from having a child. The discus thrown by Perseus struck him, the blow was fatal and he died at once. The prophecy had come true, despite what the king had done to avoid it. Perseus mourned for the proper length of time, though it might have been difficult to mourn for a grandfather who had done his best to kill him and his mother casting them into the sea to die. With his death their troubles came to an end indeed. Perseus and Andromeda lived happily for many years, and their descendants became great heroes and kings of Greece. Perhaps the greatest of these was the famous Heracles, the strongest man in the world. Perseus is a culture hero of ancient Greece, his story includes several folk motives. First is the princess locked away in a tower where no one but a hero or a god can reach her. Then there is the prophecy that a king will be killed by his son or grandson, which the king tries in vain to overturn. In another familiar motive, Perseus performs a classic hero quest, he slayed Medusa and then rescued a princess from a monster. All these achievements make him of particular interest to folklorists and storytellers alike. In other words, the famous Greek hero Perseus was the personification of heroism, and was served as an example for many more generations of heroes following the path of righteousness and greatness. If you've enjoyed the story, leave it a like, a comment and share around. Don't forget to subscribe as well as it helps a lot to promote the channel. Feel free to suggest what you would like next. And as always, stay curious.